उन्नीस की गर्मियों में फिल्म डिवीजन का एक यूनिट बंगाल की खाड़ी में बसे अनजाने द्वीपों की जानकारी हासिल करने निकला नक्शे में छोटे छोटे बिंदु दिखने वाले द्वीपों में बहुत कम लोग गए हैं 300 से ज्यादा सुंदर और रहस्यमय द्वीप समूह को अंदमान निकोबार कहते हैं अंदमान निकोबार द्वीप समूह 725 किलोमीटर क्षेत्र में फैला हुआ है इस क्षेत्र में केंद्रीय प्रदेश का प्रशासनिक मुख्यालय पोर्ट ब्लेयर में है पोर्ट ब्लेयर को अंग्रेजों ने बसाया था सिर्फ एक कारागार के रूप में उन भारतीयों को रखने के लिए जो उनकी आंख का कांटा थे चाहे वो कैदी हों या राजनैतिक बंदी मुख्य भूमि से काला पानी भेजे जाने वाले लोग कभी घर नहीं लौटते थे उन्नीसवीं सदी की शुरुआत में जब अंग्रेज अपने को सभ्य कहने लगे थे उस समय अंग्रेजी राज में उन्होंने द्वीपवासियों के साथ बर्बरतापूर्ण व्यवहार किया उन्हें मार भगाने की नाकामयाब कोशिश की जिसकी गवाह हैं अंग्रेजों की कब्रें। आजादी के बाद पोर्ट ब्लेयर की शक्ल बहुत बदल गई There are still many islands of which little is known, many islands yet to be explored. It was in search of the people of these remote islands that our expedition set out from Port Blair. Our first destination was the island of Chowra, unmarked on most maps. Chowra is often called the Devil's Abode. and the people here are highly superstitious. They are great believers in magic and have a number of totems whose functions we do not quite know. The people of Chowra do not generally bury their dead. Although the body is exposed to the elements, the soul sails away in a boat on its eternal journey. The people of Chowra are good makers of boats and they are famous in the neighboring islands for their pottery. Most Nicobaris believe that for all ceremonial purposes, food should be cooked in Chowra pots. Although the islanders are hard-working and clever, they are nevertheless at the mercy of their primitive beliefs. The blood from a pig's tail, mixed with some medicinal herbs, is supposed to cure ailments of the chest and the stomach. On Chowra Island, the witch doctors reign supreme. Only they can exorcise evil spirits. This is the island of Great Nicobar. It is the only island of the Nicobar group which has rivers and meandering creeks. As we glided through the lush jungle, we were reminded that a Danish missionary first came here in 1831. It was he who discovered the inhabitants of the island called the Schompen. The Schompens had the reputation of being a fierce tribe, but we did not find them so. Shy, yes, but otherwise more curious than hostile.
The jungles in which the Champagnes live teem with wildlife, especially a profusion of insects and reptiles. The truth is that very little is known of the Champagnes. We do know that they know how to make fire, but apart from glimpses of their daily life, we know nothing of their history. Even in the case of this lizard, we don't know whether it is meant to be eaten or some parts of it used for medicinal or magical purposes. A pressure cooker, champagne style. Among the fruits of the forest, the pandanus is the staple diet of the champagnes. The champagnes, like many of the tribes of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, are gradually dying away. Today, they number barely 92. This is largely due to disease and ignorance. The Romantics speak of the wonder of the pagan life and would like to isolate these people completely. The administrators want to help them. Indeed, if they do not get timely help, they will soon be extinct. The answer, perhaps, is to protect them and to make the process of assimilation as gradual as possible, if and when they want to assimilate. The strangers have come, the stream flows. Soon the strangers will go away. of the Nicobars who are of Mongoloid origin. We now approach the island known as Little Andaman. This island is the home of the Onge tribe. Most of the tribes of the Andaman group are of Negrito origin. According to the census of 1971, the Onges have dwindled to a mere 112 in number. This in spite of friendly contact with modern man. Whereas the Onge men go out to hunt, the women roam the forests in search of roots and tubers. The Onges have no notions of cultivating the soil and live off the land. Agriculture is unknown to them. Whereas tobacco has now become popular, the consumption of alcohol, however, is unknown. Until 50 years ago, they did not even boil their food because the concept of cooking was alien to them. Let alone a fishing net, even a fishing line is unknown to the Onges. The greatest delicacy for the Onge is honey. The bees do not sting the man because he rubs the juice of a special herb over his face and his hands.
a simple expression of joy. One wonders whether our classical dances of today did not originate in this fashion thousands of years ago. Perhaps the most ancient hairdressing salon in the world, and it is all done with a seashell. In one respect, the husbands and the wives of the Onge tribe are amazingly different from so-called civilized people. They understand the beauty of stillness and silence. They are lovers absorbed in eternal quietude. expedition approached the curiously called Interview Island, we wondered whether we would be able even to have a glimpse of the inhabitants called Jarwas. The Jarwas have been known to be the most fierce of all the tribes of the Andamans and the Nicobars. It is said that one who encounters a Jarwa doesn't live to tell the tale. No one in recorded history had ever encountered anything but poisoned arrows from the Jarwa tribe. We were, to say the least, astounded to receive a spontaneously warm reception. Why? Was it because a dying tribe thought that outsiders could help them? Was it because we came with gifts rather than guns? The truth is that we do not know. We don't know their language. We don't even know what they call themselves. The word Jarwa is used by other Andamanese to refer to the members of this tribe as the other people. What we do know is that in 1872, more than a hundred years ago, it is recorded that a landing party was violently repulsed. Repeated attempts at making contact had failed until 1974, when we were fortunate. In a sense, these smiling exchanges made us feel like pioneers among a beautiful, lovable people. They were amazed to see long hair and beards. Is there a substitute for innocence and a natural breaking of barriers between human beings? last to what is known as the North Sentinel Island. Although some expeditions had landed here, the Sentinelese had never been sighted. We left gifts of coconuts, knives, lengths of cloth, a pig, products of the plastic age.
We withdrew and waited, but no one came. We stayed wide awake, for the sleeping hand fashions no pictures, the tired eye sees no clarity. What are those moving shapes? Are they human? At last, the first glimpse of the Sentinelese. Is this a first step towards understanding a tribe never before seen by outside eyes? This tribe believes in total isolation. It will not tolerate a stranger. We were prevented from approaching the shore. In his dream, the hunter's triumphant spear gouges the eye of the moon, and when he wakes, the victim is his love. A member of our film unit was wounded by one of the many arrows, each two and a half meters long. He will carry this scar till his death. But has this experience helped us to understand the nature of primitive man, or of modern man? The Sentinelese don't want to have anything to do with us. Are they right? Is the Stone Age preferable to the nuclear age? These ineffective arrows and spears, do they not convey some message from the past which intellectual man has perhaps forgotten? There is the sky and there is man. We have begun to understand the nature of the moon and of Mars and other planets. But have we begun to understand our own impulses? This is a story with a lot of mystery and in many ways our expedition has failed. Only succeeding generations may find the answers we seek. Until then, perhaps we have no choice but to leave it all to the islands, the oceans, and the currents of time. <laughs>